it definitely looks like a photo camera and it absolutely is a photo camera but within this photo camera there is an, an astonishing video camera, an 8K video camera. Our task for the video team was um, I think a very modern style of filming. The Z9 as a photo camera was given to a photographer and then he or she did start to, to take pictures and most of them they were in their game like 100% and the whole video team was, was there and we had to, sh to, to record everything, we had to capture every scene but there was no chance of like repeating scenes or even controlling the situation. You either get the, the shot or the, get the scene or you're not getting it and most of the time something happened and, and the, the, one of my team was just like get, trying to capture that specific moment and, and, and you had to really rely on the camera. I think there are several ways of working with video and one of them is uh, planning scenes and uh, having actors and kind of like setting everything up and doing it three, four, ten times, a hundred times to get really everything perfectly in, in, in box. But in this case, we, we just had to be ready instantaneously. So the camera had to be, had to be there and be able to, to record the capture and capture the scene um, in an instant of a second. And that's, that's something the Z9 does really good. I think especially in 2021, um, being able to have a a high, highly authentic output and, and having a small capable team being, being on location and being ready to film really amazing scenes is more important than ever. The Z9 is a combination of quality in terms of resolution and speed but also kind of compactness. Sometimes I forget how quickly technology changes. I can think back in times when we were fighting um, against technology. Now it's kind of like working with the technology. Um, like displays, exposure, autofocus, dynamic range. It's nothing you have to think about. You just, you just work with it. The whole production was very interesting. We were in Berlin driving overnight in a bus to um, to Spain, driving back to France in a bus, and um, then UK. There were so many locations involved that um, we did not have a lot of time in between the stations. And um, the CF Express cards were so fast, together with SSD files, uh, SSD hard drives, you you could actually work already while copying, and 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 the copying time was was super short. So. Um, we enjoyed that, that speed. We were actually a bit scared because we were told that there is going to be a shipment of the Z9 pre-production and um, we had 24 hours before the production, before the bus came and we were kind of off to, to Berlin. Um, we were not scared because of like kind of, we didn't trust Nikon, we were scared because we, we, we thought, can we handle that new camera? Because it's like an amazing camera and it's totally new and it, there are so many things new and, and, and upgraded. And we were kind of asking ourselves, can we handle that production level with that camera? And um, it, was, it was still in Cologne when we, when we were working with the, with the camera, like in a test, testing environment, we recognized that everything is kind of Nikon. It's the same. It's, it's not the same, it's new, but it's the same. Everything is like a bit better, a bit more thought through. Um, but it's still kind of like, you don't have to think if you're using a Nikon already, you just like use it. I have to mention one thing, which is a skill of the Z9, which is not written down in any specs. Um, probably it is, but it's not being published and it is it, it was super important on the whole production. It's the time you switch on the camera till the camera is ready to record. And with the Z9, it's, I, I would not say instantaneously, but it's instantaneously. It's, it's, you switch on and 
the time your finger needs from the on-off button to go to record, the camera is ready to, to, to record. In terms of a production like this um, and the Z9 being an 8K camera, when you get a special scene and you capture that scene in 8K, you're not, you're not kind of like bound to, to use 8K as an output format, but you can also just get two or even three different scenes um, out of one. Some of the scenes from a launch video are, are actually the, 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 same, the same shot, um, but just like differently placed and differently cropped and they look like two, two different cameras. And that's also one thing I really admire with, with using 8K. In reality, the ideal is not always happening. When you are in a real environment, in real life, um, you sometimes are happy that you got one shot. If we had situations where we had like three cameras and only one was able to get that true emotion or that, that, that fantastic shot. So you only get it once and after that the, the biker says, oh, I can't do it again or whatever. And then, um, and then you're happy that you got it on the, on the card, in the box, once. And then the frame rate and the resolution comes in play. So with the frame rate, you can make it slower and therefore the file gets longer. So you can use like the first five seconds, the last five seconds uh, in two different scenes. Um, although you only filmed like two seconds. <laughs> um, and with the resolution, you can use like the upper part and the lower part in two different scenes. And something you should not forget is the 8K is not only the pure quality of an 8K footage, but it's also a chance of, of us productive or production people um, fulfilling the, the, the customer's wishes. Because in this production as well, we had a massive list of different formats and different files for different social media channels. And you only, you, you, nowadays, in 2021, you don't only have like 16 by nine, you have nine by 16, you have square, you have four by five, and you have so many different demands on on footage going there and there and there and being a trailer here and next spot there. So when, when you film, you, you try to get that scenic shot, but you always have in mind that probably from that shot you're filming, you have to export four different versions and four different croppings. And um, when you hear 8K and you hear modern camera, you go like overheating. <laughs> and we were afraid of overheating 8K because everyone talks about overheating 8K cameras. Um, but it did not happen. And in, in Saragossa, in Spain, um, we were actually in a desert and it was actually way above 35 degrees Celsius. And we had like a tent for the production team to not burn. It was super hot. It was super hot. And no overheating, nothing. Not, not once. There was one shoot in the UK we could not do um, within our team and so our, our colleagues from the UK um, filmed that shoot and they even had a Z9 mounted on a drone. Totally crazy, totally weird, but when I saw the footage, um, it's impressive. It's just plainly impressive because you get that quality of that camera and the angle and perspective of that, of that racing drone. In, in a lot of situations, you, you just have to have a small camera. Um, in Berlin, when we were with Christian Schuller, um, he was shooting right in front of the wall and there was like 20 assistants around and there was like the makeup artist and the model and the model had a dress like this. And I know that I think Stefan wanted to film something from the side and there was just not enough space. He, 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 he's a really good guy with the camera and he's really stable, but holding a camera from the hand is never the same like from the shoulder with a, with a bit of a weight. On the next stations like in France or in, in, in Spain, I saw him working with the camera from his hand more and more often and I think some of the best shots from the whole production he did just with a plain camera in his hands. But you're so flexible and I think if we could be more efficient and more, more effective and get better shots when the gear would be smaller. And I, I think in, in some situations, it's a definite yes.
we worked with a lot of lenses, like the Z lenses, ranging from 14 to, I think the longest was 400 millimeter. Um, it was the, the teleconverted uh, 70 to 200. The focal length gives you the, the view, the, the impression, the feeling. I think lenses are an efficient and important part of the whole system. And with the Z lenses, they're, they're absolutely enjoyable. It was actually amazing to be able to watch those fantastic photographers and creative minds work with that camera. Um, and I hope our video shows how intense their connection to the camera is. What we actually wanted to empower and show is that a photographer is using a tool, but it's more than a tool, it's kind of a connection. Um, for a photographer, the camera is the, is the way of, of, of being able to let others participate in the situations. Everyone is using a camera, but it's not only a camera. Nikon Z9. Unstoppable.